Hi everyone, this is Crash Me Twice, and today, well, we got ourselves a Sikorsky Heli Grip. I believe this is from either the Crane or something similar. I've seen some like this also on different other Sikorsky, so I'm not sure what this grip belongs to, but I'm gonna restore it. And then I'm gonna convert it to be used uh, as a simming grip. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I'm gonna clean it up here. I got already the buttons out. And there seem to be brand new buttons. So somebody obviously put those in. I have not figured out how to remove the hat switch but this whole grip was epoxied so it looks like JB Weld to me so it definitely was an amateur to restart this grip so I'm gonna see if I can take this apart I probably have to press that pin out here and to get this assembly out and somehow I have to find a solution for this hat switch so I'll let you know how that goes. Alrighty. So let's see if that, this just broke out. There was a piece in there. I don't know if this is actually a real piece or if this was just, you know, a run in from epoxy. Because this whole area was epoxied in. And this hole is definitely not, uh, this definitely was from the manufacturer. So I think either this piece is kind of like a washer type and it was epoxied in because that's how it looks to me. Or it came from a manufacturer but it doesn't look like it. We clean it up and then we'll see. Maybe it was just a washer or some kind of a thing. And I believe what I can see here, I went through here with the X-Acto knife to clear the epoxy up. Let's see if we can lift this out because normally all those buttons they just lift out from those grips. Let's go in here carefully. A very thin screwdriver. Yeah, I think it moves. So a lot of grease here. Here's our head switch. Excellent. Yeah, it looks like to me, if you look in here, I don't know if you can see that. There's some kind of a... Maybe from the inside, yeah, no. There's some sort of a mechanism in here to probably hold that switch or hold that trigger button in place. And what looks to me like there's a little threaded hole there, it was, because it's no longer threaded, and that probably screws into that holder for that, for that uh, trigger here. I'll keep working on it, and then we go from there. So, it's two days later and the grip is as clean as it can be. I had to soak it for two days in Lysol because it was, uh, had a really bad smell to it and there was obviously some bacterial growth in there. So with alcohol, with uh, Lysol and you know, the, the alcohol I mixed with water a little bit because otherwise it would probably attack that material. So then I thought, okay, I'm gonna give it a, a shot with Lysol just uh, momentarily for like a couple minutes. See, just on this part here. So I put it into a little, little bin like, uh, like this one here and just let it sit in there and see if it does anything to the material and it didn't so i went ahead and had it in the it had a whole bath in there by cutting a by cutting a milk gallon just on the top 
around it and uh, stuck the whole grip in. And after Lysol, I filled the whole thing up with baking soda. And so it turns out that that kind of worked out. Not perfect, but I would say 99%. Uh, it's, it's all right now. I also discovered that this part, even though it has a little bit of epoxy on it, was actually an integral part of it. So I glued that back in and then uh, I cleaned it up as much as I could. You can also see here now, there is no more epoxy on it. I filed it all up, the epoxy, I filed it all off. And then I went with the X-Acto knife and uh, several other modeling tools into it to clean all this area up because actually there were screws beneath it. So I don't know whoever did this job, obviously had no clue on what to do because these screws were uh, a very important part to get that trigger assembly out. And you can also see on this part here, this is how this whole switch system works here. So you have two stages. And I cleaned this whole up with alcohol and also with electronic cleaner. And that um, seemed to work really good for it. And I haven't re-greased any of those uh, springs yet, but uh, everything works just like new. So it's a, a very nice design. You can see here there's those brass screws. These are the same as what they used here. And one of them I had actually to drill out and then take out because it was so epoxy in and so uh, gummed up in there. I had no other chance of drilling out, but it's not a problem finding those type of screws. So I do have uh, several in stock to fix this back up in here. But again, let me hold it close to the camera here so you can see this. All right, now activate it. So it's really nice and it sits uh, behind in here. It goes, gets mounted like this into it and then the trigger activates that. Okay, the, the trigger itself here is uh, quite discolored as you can see this here but there's nothing I can do about it. I can try to polish it later on when I'm finished with the main assembly and see if this uh, will have any effect on it. And here's your trigger cover and that goes over it and then the, the, the trigger itself is, is uh, held in place uh, with, with this pin here. And you can see it has marks on, on this side here, which has a little rifling on it. And that will go and engage into one of those holes. And that's all to it. I just had to drive that out with the arbor press and it came out. Now, previously I showed you the inside here and that's the part you saw when I used the flashlight. And this part has two screws in here and it goes in here and, uh, and this will hold down the trigger. Okay, so on the bottom here you can see there's a piece of aluminum in here, machined aluminum, which does not come out. I tried every way possible, but it is uh, either cast into it or these two parts are cast and then glued together with the aluminum in place because there is in the bottom here, I don't know if you can see this, probably not, there in the bottom here is a piece which protrudes into the aluminum. So there's no way to get this back out. But we don't need to. So, but the grip is fairly clean. Some of the lettering came off, but that's not a big issue. I'm gonna go over with a lettering white and fix those like the cargo here on top is the C is missing. Uh, from the trim release, from the R, there's a, a little spot missing. 
but it's all all in all and the L. But all in all, uh, I'm very happy with the cleanup process. So after I'm all done, I'm gonna cut, uh, polish it, and uh, that should restore it to a, to a pretty good, pretty good condition. And I mean, it's a used grip, and it, I kind of like the idea of having a used grip. Otherwise, I would have bought a new one. I got this on an aviation auction for fairly inexpensively and uh, I'm very happy with it with the purchase because these grips uh, if you go like on eBay or something they run for eight nine hundred bucks if for a good one and that's not what I paid for so uh, for the price I got it for I think it was uh, close to 200 bucks I was uh, surprised even finding one and I just bought it and I couldn't be happier with it because I needed a piece to experiment with. I wanted to convert it into a grip for the Simpit, so uh, I didn't have in mind a uh, actual restore in point of uh, authentic uh, authenticity. I just wanted to restore it for my own purpose of of modding it. The three buttons here, these are new buttons and I looked them up and uh, I could not find much out about them except that these are standard replacement buttons for those type of grips. However, they are really hard to press. I mean, they work very well, but they're hard to press. And maybe a real pilot with gloves or whatever needs that feedback. But in the Simpit, uh, I think I, I will replace them or modify them for, with uh, more tactile buttons in there. Because, I mean, they are nice and they would look great in there. But, as I said before, they're just too hard to press. If I fly with those buttons and have to press them, uh, I'm almost guaranteed to get off with some cyclic. So, uh, next here is the hat switch. This is uh, a four-way head switch, and it's a little bit clunky. It's also very hard, you can hear it. So I probably will replace that one with a more modern head switch as well, because this doesn't have to survive a flight in a real helicopter or things like that. So I'm gonna replace that with a standard uh, electronic uh, head switch. I may do something even with an eight way. Uh, no idea just yet. So that's through that part. I mean, let me, let me take a look here. Okay. So if you do know anything about the script, where it comes from, uh, please let me know in the comments below as I couldn't find anything out the script with the serial number or with the other, you know, with the description of it, I contacted uh, uh, Sikorsky and, uh, well, they wrote me back on an email that they couldn't help me as, then, as these numbers do not match anything in the database. I do know this came out of Sikorsky but I do not know if this is a part of Sikorsky or if this was put into the helicopter for uh, a replacement and they didn't have anything else on, uh, on hand, uh, but the pinout or whatever, the cable was coming out, matches that. I, I, I couldn't think of uh, any other way this, this would come out of a Sikorsky, but uh, the the guy who auctioned it off told me it comes from a Sikorsky and he pulled it out of a crane. I don't know. I've seen those also in, in like the, I believe it's the Sea King I saw it once, but you know, don't, don't uh, nail me on that because I really don't know. So I'm just as guessing as, as anybody else does. But if you do know anything about it, if you know the manufacturer uh, or the model, of the helicopter this thing came out of because some of you guys may have flown the real thing and have seen it before and I would really appreciate if you let me know in the comments what uh, 
this one is. I also will put in the comments the serial number and everything so you don't have to stop the video and write it down. So I'm going to have that in the description. So maybe you can help me out. That would be highly appreciated. I really would love to know where this thing originally came from, in which uh, chopper it was in. So that concludes uh, the first part of this modding process. I just wanted to introduce you to that new grip. A couple of thoughts that I had about it. This series we're going to start with uh, trying to make an, a cartridge in here to contain the electronics if this is all possible. There will be more on that grip very soon, but that's it for today. So next time I'm continuing to work on the fourth turn mod, which will be part eight. And that video is coming soon. Please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. And don't forget to check out my Discord channel and visit my website at crashingtwice.com for more info on this and other projects. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a nice cup of coffee from the link below or on my website. Hope you all enjoyed this video and hope I earned a like from you. Crash Me Twice, out.